Hi guys, uh, in this video we're going to start talking a little bit about switches and some of the switches that are found on our test beds. So the first type of switch we're going to talk about is a touch sensor and we have two types of touch sensors. They're limit switches and bump switches. On the top here you can see I have a limit switch and on the bottom is a bump switch. Uh, the main difference between them is that the limit switch has a metal bar on it and the bump switch has a circular piece that gets pressed. They both serve the same function. Uh, so these two switches or sensors are digital sensors and they get plugged into digital ports one and two. In our class, while we're using the test bed, the limit switch will be plugged into digital one and the bump switch will be plugged into digital two. Since both of these uh, switches are digital sensors. This means that they read uh, a value of either 1 or 0. So they're either pressed or they're released in terms of how the computer uh, reads them. So when the limit switch or the bump switch are pressed in, the computer will read it as a 1. When you release either of those switches, the computer will read it as a 0. And you can kind of think of this as an on-off switch or a yes-no. When we program using either of these two sensors, you're going to use the natural language commands of until touch, until release, and until bump. Until touch just means that once the switch is uh, pressed in, the command will then, or the program will then start. When you use until release, the program won't start until the switch has been released. And if you use until bump, the program won't start until it's been pushed in and released. And we're normally going to use the until bump uh, command in class. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example uh, of a bump switch and we'll go ahead and write an example pro program. So our example here is wait for the bumper switch to be bumped before the right motor turns on at half power for five seconds and then stops. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and grab this and use it as my task main. So we'll copy, bring that down, open this up, and we need to go ahead and open up a PLTW template before we get started. And once we have it open, the first thing we need to do, remember, is save into the student drive. Save to Mr. Warren's drive. Um, if you only save onto your personal drive, I will not be able to see your program. So you need to go down to students, find the Warren folder, automation and robotics, and make sure you save in your correct section. So we'll call this bump switch example. Save it. Project title, bump switch example. And I'm going to go down to the task description and just copy and paste the description from the PowerPoint. So the task description, wait for the bumper switch to be bumped before the right motor turns on at half power for five seconds and then stops. I have this nice complex behavior here that I now need to break into simple and basic behaviors in my pseudocode before I can write my task main code. So let's get started breaking this down. My first uh, line of pseudocode is going to be wait for the bump switch to be pressed. And then I can go to line two. Well, once the bump switch is pressed, what's going to happen next? Well, right motor is going to turn on at half power. Once our right motor turns on, it's going to run for five seconds. And then lastly, after that five second time period, our right motor is going to turn off. Good. It's pretty simple code there. So now I'm able to move into my task main now that I have the pseudocode done. So you'll notice that the big difference here between this code or this example and the ones we've done in class is that we're not starting the program with the motor just running. 
we're starting it with a bump switch, which is acting as a start button for our program. So in order to do that, we're going to come over to natural language, drop down that box, and we're not going to start with movement like we've been doing. We're going to start with until, because we don't want anything to happen until the bump switch has been hit. So we're going to select until, and then you can see I have until bump, until release, and until touch. And remember, those are the three commands that we're going to use with uh, touch sensors. So what we're going to use today is known as an until bump. The robot does what it was doing until the touch sensor is pressed in and then released out. So go ahead and grab until bump and drop it down. Now you can see that I have to put in my sensor port and the time that I want to delay uh, that action. So before I move any further, I need to make sure that I set up my motors and sensors so that the program knows that the bump switch is plugged in to digital port 2 and my motors are plugged in the correct places in the cortex. So let's take a minute, go up to motors and sensors. I'm going to go over to standard models, select GTT testbed, and remember I have to change where my motors are located. So we're going to go over to motors, take out claw motor, take out right motor, and take out left motor. And we'll start with port 1. Port 1 is going to be left motor with a capital M. It is a 393 motor, and we're going to say no motor in port 2, no motor in port 3, then go down to port 10, where we'll put right motor with a capital M, and that is a 393 motor. Apply it, and let's just check our digital sensors area to make sure that, yep, there's our bump switch in digital port 2, and it's listed as touch sensor. We're good to go. So we have set our motors and sensors. Now we just need to tell the computer, yes, I really wanted to do that. We're going to select compile program and I'm good to go to start programming. So back over to our until bump. We've got our function here, until bump, and we need to say, well, what sensor do we want to use? We want to use the bump switch. So we'll put in bump switch and we want to delay the time of one millisecond. And that just means once we hit the bump switch, it's going to wait one millisecond before it runs the rest of the program. So I'm ready to go ahead and make my notes. So until bump, we're going to go over, make our notes. We are wait for the bump switch to be pressed. And I'm ready to go to my next line. So look at our pseudocode number two. We're going to, oh, right motor turns on at half power. So come up to natural language, down to movement start motor and we need to fill in which motor we want we want the right motor right motor at a speed of half power remember that the fastest speed of the motor is a value of 127 so if we're doing half power we need to cut that in half which would be 63 and a half uh, but we don't use decimals in robot C, so we're just going to go with 63. Okay, so start motor, right motor at 63. Let's make our notes on the side. Right motor turns on at half power. Good. Okay, next line. Wait five seconds. So we need to put a wait in. Come up here to wait. Put our wait in. Our wait time is going to be five seconds and then we'll just come over here and make our note okay wait five seconds and then we have our last line of code which is right motor turns off so we'll come up to stop motor drop it down we want the right motor to turn off and then we need to make our last little note slash right motor turns off. Good, so let's take one last look at our code before we move forward. Everything's configured. We have our task description written, our pseudocode. We have our task main with our notes, so we're ready to compile program. We have no X's, it looks like everything's good. So let's download this to our robot and see if it works. Select download robot, okay. My debug status comes up, I click start, and you'll notice that nothing happens on the testbed. That's because we haven't pressed our bump switch yet. 
So let's go ahead and press in our bump switch and see if it works. Runs for five seconds and stops. Works like a charm. Uh, so this is an example to how to program with the touch sensors. Um, and you will be doing a couple of these examples on your own in class. So if you need help, uh, please reference this video or ask me in class for help. Enjoy!